Hi everyone. In this video, let us discuss about the drug interaction between atorvastatin and rifampin. Let us see what is the dual mechanism that exists between this interaction. What is rifampin? Rifampin is a anti-mycobacterial agent. We have so many other drugs like rifabutin, rifapentin. All these are belonging to the one class of anti-mycobacterials. And rifampin is a semi-synthetic drug that is going to be derived from the rifamycins. Rifamycins are having large structure and these drugs are going to inhibit the transcription step in the mycobacteria. Within the mycobacteria, the double-stranded DNA is going to be converted into single-stranded RNA by one of the important enzymes, the DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. This DNA-dependent RNA polymerase enzyme is going to be inhibited by rifampin and other rifamycins. Thereby, they inhibit the transcription process within the mycobacteria. In this way, RNA copy is not synthesized which results in the inhibition of the protein synthesis. That's why rifampin can be used as an anti-mycobacterial, particularly it can be used in the treatment of tuberculosis as well as in the leprosy, this drug can be used. Now let us see what is atorvastatin. This drug is having the suffix statin which indicates that it is a anti-hyperlipidemic acid. Actually here the right suffix is the vastatin, the vastatin indicates it is a anti-hyperlipidemic agent. And this drug is having the structure like this. And you can observe it is having a large structure, but all the statins are having a common structural feature. Here you can observe a carboxylic acid which is attached with a 7 carbon aliphatic chain. And this chain is going to be attached with the heterocyclic ring system here. So this is the common structural feature of all the statins. They are having the heptanoic acid chain which is attached with an aryl or heterocyclic ring. So atorvastatin is chemically aryl heptanoic acid derivative and here the aryl group is nothing but the pyrrole ring. So atorvastatin is a pyrrole heptanoic acid. And this drug acts as an anti-hyperlipidemic agent. It can decrease the LDL cholesterol as well as increase the HDL cholesterol. We know that LDL is the bad cholesterol and HDL is the good cholesterol. So this drug is going to reduce the risk of the atherosclerosis. Particularly it is used in the type 2A as well as 2B familial dyslipidemia. But how this drug acts? This drug is going to inhibit the cholesterol biosynthesis within the liver, thereby to increase the LDL uptake from the blood. In this way, atorvastatin can decrease the LDL cholesterol within the blood. So one of the important steps in the biosynthesis of the cholesterol within the liver is the conversion of the HMG-CoA into the mevalonate. Now this can be converted into endometabolite mevalonate where it is going to be reduced such that the CoA part is going to be removed and this step is going to be mediated by one of the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. Now this mevalonate which is formed within the liver can be converted into cholesterol by several steps. In this way, the cholesterol is going to be biosynthesized within the liver but within this biosynthesis, the conversion of the HMG-CoA to the mevalonate is the rate determining step which is controlling the, the biosynthesis of the cholesterol within the liver. So if we block this step, we can inhibit the biosynthesis of the cholesterol. So atorvastatin is going to inhibit the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme Thereby, it inhibits the cholesterol biosynthesis within the liver, which results in the increased uptake of the LDL from the blood into the liver. In this way, the LDL cholesterol levels within the blood can be reduced by atorvastatin. Now, we have discussed about the details of two drugs, rifampin as well as atorvastatin. There is no structural similarity between these two drugs. Rifampin is a large structure belonging to the rifamycins, whereas atorvastatin is a aryl haptanoic acid. And even they are differ by mechanism. Rifampin is acting on the mycobacteria by inhibiting the DNA-dependent RNA polymerase enzyme, whereas atorvastatin is going to inhibit the cholesterol biosynthesis within the liver by inhibiting the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme. So again, there is no relation between the mechanisms of two drugs. Then, what is the interaction between these two drugs? How they are going to interact? Here, the interaction is mainly because of the rifampin. Rifampin is having the two important properties which produce the drug interactions with many of the drugs. Rifampin acts as an enzyme inducer and it can induce the enzymes like the CYP3A4. These are the metabolic enzymes which produce the metabolism of many of the drugs. And among the metabolic enzymes, CYP3A4 is the most abundant enzyme responsible for the metabolism. So Rifampin can produce the drug interactions with many of the drugs by inducing the cytochrome P450-3A4 enzyme. Similarly, Rifampin can also stimulate the transporters like the P-glycoprotein. It is an inducer of the P-glycoprotein transporters which are the afflexin pumps which again eliminate the drug out of the body. 
So by induction of the CYP3A4, rifampin can increase the metabolism of other drugs. Similarly, by stimulation of the P-glycoprotein transporters, it increases the excretion of the other drugs. In this way, rifampin can increase the metabolism as well as increase the excretion of the other drugs which are given with the rifampin. Even here, we can observe the two mechanisms, increase the metabolism and increase the excretion. Rifampin can interact with the etorvastatin by increasing its excretion. Now, etorvastatin is metabolized by CYP3A4 and this enzyme is responsible for the oxidation. So here, etorvastatin undergoes the hydroxylation at different positions, particularly it produces the hydroxylation at the second and fourth position such that it is going to produce the two metabolites, two hydroxyetorvastatin as well as four hydroxyetorvastatin. Now, rifampin is one of the drugs which induce the cytochrome P450 system and it can induce the CYP3A4 thereby it can increase the metabolism of the etorvastatin. In this way, rifampin can reduce the bioavailability of the etorvastatin by increasing the metabolism. But this is not only the mechanism of drug interaction. Rifampin can also increase the excretion of the etorvastatin. But here, what are the metabolites produced from the etorvastatin are the active metabolites. They can show around the 70% of the activity of etorvastatin. So even rifampin can increase the metabolism, still it can produce the active metabolites, which can also inhibit the HMG coerodectase enzyme. So possibly drug interaction at this phase is not the main mechanism for the reduced activity of the etorvastatin, as this drug produces the active metabolites. How this etorvastatin is going to be excreted? Etorvastatin can be excreted into the bile as well as it is also excreted through the renal system into the urine. But the biliary excretion of the etorvastatin is the major route of elimination whereas around 1% of the drug and their metabolites are excreted in the urine. So etorvastatin is mainly excreted through the bile by the hepatobiliary excretion. So even the exact mechanism is not known, rifampin is going to interact with the etorvastatin by increasing the biliary excretion of the etorvastatin. Here the rifampin can stimulate the P-glycoprotein pumps at the hepatic cells which increase the biliary excretion of the etorvastatin resulting in the loss of activity. So let us take the three compartments. This is the GIT, blood and the renal tubules. So now the etorvastatin when it is administered it can present in the GI tract and through the GI tract it can be absorbed into the systemic circulation. But on the GI tract few of the pumps are present which are nothing but the P-glycoprotein pumps. These pumps are acting like efflexing pumps which are going to efflux the drug out of the body against to the direction of their entry. So all we have seen that etorvastatin is entered from the GI tract to the blood. So now this P-glycoprotein is an efflux pump which is going to efflux the drug out of the systemic circulation again into the GI tract. So few of the drug molecules are going to be efflexed out of the systemic circulation into the GI tract which results in the decreased bioavailability of the drug. At the same time, few of the drug molecules are going to be metabolized by cytochrome P450 system. CYP3A4 is one of the major metabolic enzyme responsible for the metabolism of the etorvastatin. So now the etorvastatin can be metabolized by CYP3A4. In this way, few of the drug molecules are metabolized. And what are the other molecules available after the metabolism are going to acting on the liver, thereby they inhibit the biosense of the cholesterol. As we have already discussed, here the metabolism of the drug produces the active metabolites which are having around 70% of the activity of etorvastatin. So metabolism is not the important mechanism of elimination of the drug from the body. Then at the renal tubules, P-glycoprotein pump is present which, which can efflux the drug out of the systemic circulation into the renal tubules. So at the renal tubules, the drug can be excreted in the urine. But already we have discussed that only a small amount of the drug is going to be eliminated through the urine and most of the drug is going to be excreted through the bile. Now let us see what is the action of the rifampin. Rifampin can induce the P-glycoprotein transporters at the GI tract which can increase the efflux of the drug out of the systemic circulation into the GI tract. And rifampin can also induce the CYP3A4 enzyme thereby it can increase the metabolism of the etorvastatin. And finally it can also induce the P-glycoprotein transporters at the renal tubules which increase the excretion of the drug in the urine. So which mechanism is more important? Even the interaction at the absorption and uh, renal tubules is not that much significant. Rifampin can also stimulate the P-glycoprotein pumps at the hepatic cells which increase the biliary excretion of the drug. In this way, 
Refampin can decrease the atorvastatin levels within the systemic circulation by increasing the excretion through the bile by stimulation of the P glycoproteins at the hepatic cells. That's why whenever atorvastatin is given with the rifampin, it results in the failure of the treatment and the LDL levels are not strictly controlled because of the reduced bioavailability of the atorvastatin in presence of rifampin. So that's about the drug interaction between the rifampin and atorvastatin. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.